how can we write a function as a power series quickly? We always have the slow method. If we start with a function that's say infinity, we can first compute all its derivative and use those to write the Taylor series at a point given by this formula. And then we have to prove, using the remainder theorems, that the limit of the remainders is zero as n goes to infinity, and then the function is equal to its Taylor series. But this is the slow method. I want something faster. Well, there is a better way. We already have four functions that we've written as power series, exponential, sine, cosine, and the geometric series. The first three, we actually did it with the slow method I just described. The fourth one, we kind of ran into it. The key tool to use is that in the interior of the interval of convergence, a power series can be manipulated like a polynomial. So you can take any of these four functions we have already written as power series and add them, multiplying, compose them, take derivatives, anything, and you will get other functions written as power series. I'm going to illustrate this with some examples. I'm going to try to write these four functions as power series, the first three in this video and the fourth one in the next one. At this moment, I invite you to pause this video and try to solve the first three. Start with a function you already know how to write as a power series and manipulate it until you get the one you want. Then continue watching. For my first example, I want to write the function e to the minus x as a power series centered at zero. This is very close to the function e to the x. And I already know how to write that one as a power series, so I'll begin with that. This is true for all x. Then if instead of e to the x, I want e to the minus x, all I have to do is replace x with minus x everywhere. And I can use the same formula. This already looks like a power series. We can make it even more apparent if I separate the minus sign. And since the first one was true for all x, so is this one. And that's it. I got my new function written as a power series centered at zero. For the second example, I want to write this function, x cubed sine of x squared, as a power series centered at zero. Like before, I'm going to start with a function whose power series I already know, and in this case that would be sine of x. And we know that this expansion for sine is true for any real number x. Now instead of sine of x, I want to have sine of x squared. Since this was true for all x, it will also be true when instead of x, I write x squared everywhere. And x squared to the 2n plus 1 exponent can be simplified as x to the 4n plus 2. Now that is almost the function I'm trying to write as a power series, except I need to multiply it times x cube. But if I think of this as an infinite polynomial, the way to multiply it by x cube is multiply it term by term. And x to the 4n plus 2 times x cube could simply be x to the 4n plus 5. And that's it. That's how I write this function as a power series centered at zero. Finally, since the original expansion was true for all x, and what we've done is legal, this new power series is also equal to the function for any real number x. The third example is, I think, the most interesting one. I want to write this function, 1 over x, as a power series centered at 3. Not at 0, but at 3. Since it's not at 0, I'm going to begin by doing a change of variable. Why did I do that? A power series centered at 3 will be writing the function in terms of powers of x minus 3. And with this change of variable, when I call u equals x minus 3, I will just be writing powers of u. So effectively, I will be writing a power series centered at 0. And power series centered at 0 are easier. We are more used to them. All the common examples we have are at 0. So we find them easier. So first things first, if I'm going to do that, let me write 1 over x in terms of u. If u equals x minus 3, x will be u plus 3. And now I look at this function and it reminds me a little bit of the geometric series. 
So let's recall what the geometric series is. Here's how to write 1 over 1 minus x as a power series. So the first task is going to be to make this look a little bit like that. I'm going to factor a 3 in the denominator, so I have a 1 instead of a 3. Ah, and that's looking better now. Now it's 1 over 1 plus something. I want 1 over 1 minus something, so let me multiply by minus 1 twice. There. Now it is ready to use the formula for the geometric series. So instead of x, I have to write minus u over 3. And I have been forgetting that I have an extra 1 over 3 all the time. So let me make sure I carry it. There is a 1 over 3 here, and there is a 1 over 3 here. And now this does look like a power series. I'm going to separate the minus 1. I'm going to enter this 3 into the sum. And finally, since I've done the hard part, I'm going to undo the substitution. And instead of powers of u, I will have powers of x minus 3. And that's it. I've succeeded at my goal, which was to write the function 1 over x as a power series center at 3. One more thing to do now. What's the domain for this expansion? The geometric series is only converging when the absolute value of the variable is less than 1. So in this case, this will only work whenever the absolute value of the variable minus u over 3 is smaller than 1. This is the same thing as saying that the absolute value of u is smaller than 3, or in other words, the absolute value of x minus 3 has to be smaller than 3. So x must be between 0 and 6, which is an interval centered at 3, as it should be.